Good morning, everybody. Uh, about a week ago, on Christmas Day, 2021, I hit this hole in one, and I had fortunately recorded it. So um, I made a comment on my YouTube channel that I would be talking you through how I managed to do it. Now, before we get started, I would just like to say that most people, every person, in my opinion, we we try to get the ball when playing an approach shot. We try to get the ball close to the hole. No one, nobody really ever has a plan to get the ball in the hole because that is you know, something very, very difficult to do and it does require some luck. So what I'm always trying to do is I'm trying to put the ball close to the hole to secure um, a birdie, hopefully, or an eagle, um, and only putt once. The idea is always just to have one putt so that you've got a much better chance of winning whatever match you're playing. So... Let's get onto this mo onto this uh, short video over here. Um, as you can see, I've got 156 yards to the pin and about four uh, four yards dropped, 12 feet. I use a mathematical equation of about three feet per yard, which is pretty much what a um, what a yard is is three feet. So since it's a drop in elevation. The hole to me is playing at about roughly 152, uh, 152 yards. We have a 11 to 13 mile an hour tailwind, so it's going to be pushing the ball a little bit. So that's going to add a few yards of carry as well as the drop in elevation. So the hole is going to be playing a lot shorter than 156. So what we do, the hole is going to be playing at least at 152 minus maybe five to six yards of um, wind assistance but this is not an exact science because we the wind will carry the ball less or more depending on how much spin you put on the ball so what we'll do is start playing the video and i'll quickly talk you through how i worked out this hole so there what i was doing there is you can see i was just adjusting the spin. I'm putting quite a lot of additional backspin on the ball. And uh, that, that's something else we'll talk about in another video is there's no such thing as top spin. There's only less spin and more spin. Every golf ball spins backwards. It does not spin forwards, therefore it is not top spin. Alright, so I put quite a lot of backspin on that shot. I changed my club selection to an 8 iron which is rated at 150 yards. And I then reverse the camera angle. This is something I do on every shot. Now, I notice that this green is rolling from right to left. You can see there's a very, and it's quite steep. There's a very definitive right to left slope here. So since the, the wind is actually blowing slightly right to left as well. So there's no, we don't want to aim at the flag. We don't want to aim slightly right of the flag. We want to aim quite wide of the flag. And the reason for that being is that once the ball lands, it's going to kick left. It's not just going to drop and stop over there. It's going to kick there. It's probably going to bounce and roll, depending also on your green speed. But whatever happens, this ball is going to hit the ground, hit the green, and it's going to go left. So I deliberately aimed very, very far right of the hole to allow for a chance to get the ball close to the hole. Right, you can see, so I've aimed there, I've left it now, I've decided to take my swing now. I also did not use full power because 150, 150 yards is too much. And I gave, gave it quite a bit of backspin, which will then also reduce the yardage. So I worked it out that I use about 96, 97% power um, because I did not want to hit the ball um, too far because otherwise it's going to land behind the flag and roll down and finish somewhere over here. I wanted the ball to land in this area and roll towards the hole and hopefully get an, get an easy birdie. Alright, so let the power go. Aim for the ding. That's something that also helps your accuracy in shots. 
Now, hitting the ding is not an exact science either. It's not something you can do with every single shot. It is very, very difficult to do, but I get it right sometimes. If I don't, either too early or too late. In this case, I was marginally late. That would not affect the ball traje trajectory too much. And let's hit the ball. Let's watch the video. Now, once you get the heartbeat, the screen lights up, and uh, you know that it's going to be close. So I felt from the time that I hit the ball, even before I hit the ball, that I was going to get it close. Right, and now the ball's coming down, lands on the green. Now, as you can see, it's already landed considerably closer to the hole than where I initially aimed, which was somewhere around here. If we can just go back a few seconds and see, look where I was aiming. This is probably about two yards to the right yard and a half maybe two yards to the right of the hole and by the time it's landing on the green it is probably two feet from the hole maybe two two and a half feet from the hole so it's already drifted right to left from the tee point it started out here and it started drifting this way right to left reverse camera angle so it looks like it's left to right but from the player perspective right to left it's landed here about two to three feet, two and a half feet right of the hole. And it's just done a little bit of backspin. And it's just got enough to roll. And you can see it was rolling at quite a pace. It wasn't going to be slowing down. If the hole wasn't there, it probably would have continued rolling, rolling, rolling. I think this ended up being a T12 green. So it would have uh, definitely rolled on quite a bit more. It may have even stopped somewhere over here due to the pace and the green speed. Um, yeah, so there we can see once again landing rolling kicking to the left as I had planned and Just enough And that was pretty much it I left the video running just to see how my opponent was uh, planning to uh, Play the screen and I also wanted to see uh, What the green speed was because at this point in time I was only on hole number one we were only on hole number one and you can only get the green speed once you've landed on the green and you're putting but since i didn't get a chance to putt i wasn't even sure what the green speed was <coughs> so i wanted to just let him play a shot see what he did and as you can see he landed right here and rolled quite far away uh, okay, so it's a very fast green, not a T12 green. Nonetheless, it's the second fastest greens that you get, at least in head-to-head -head matches. Um, tournament greens are 12, very fast are 10. Championship greens are 13, but you don't get them in head-to-head -head matches. All right, everyone, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, my quick uh, commentary on how I scored that hole-in-one. Like I said before, it was not planned. Uh, I would never say that I planned it. I always planned to get the ball close to the hole two to three feet so that you left with an early uh, left with a very short putt to make a birdie or make a par um, that's the plan in golf I don't think anybody ever says I want to get it in the hole we want to get it near the hole so that we can secure a birdie or an eagle or whatever on a par three obviously it's going to be a birdie in this case so I hope you've enjoyed that video and uh, look forward to my next video which will be on its way very very soon. Thank you for watching, uh, like and subscribe please.